In class today, I was asked a question about using Jupyter Notebooks within Visual Studio Code. This was actually a capability of VS Code that I was previously unaware of. Um, the uh, participant shared the link that she had been looking at, and so I took a look at it. And I'm going to try to go ahead and make a recording showing how you can set up VS Code to use Jupyter Notebooks. So um, <clears throat> I'll put the link to this uh, page on the website. The relevant uh, part here is selecting the environment, the Anaconda environment. So uh, this is assuming that your VS Code installation came as a part of an Anaconda environment. That's apparently a requirement for uh, using Jupyter Notebooks. So um, the thing that was a little bit tricky is using the Python select interpreter command from the command palette. And so here's the key thing, shift and then command and then P, which um, on my keyboard is also shift, window key and P. So depending on your keyboard, you might have to do uh, a different key combination. But anyway, at least on Macs, it's shift, command P. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Visual Studio Code here and do, uh, oh look, show all commands, shift command P. So um, when I did this the first time, I had to scroll down to find um, the Python select interpreter, but since it was recently used, it's here at the top. So I'll click on that. And then what it shows me is all of the different interpreters that are installed on my computer. And I have to say, I was a bit surprised to see that there were this many installations of Python on my computer. Several of them are Python 2, which I don't care about. There's also several installations of Python 3, but here's the one that I ended up using. Um, and the key thing here is where it says base colon conda. Um, um, originally, I made, made a mistake and selected this one, but I think this is actually an R interpreter that I'm running in uh, as well. So I'm, I'm not sure about that, but selecting this was the correct one. The other thing, um, I'll just bring the window back up again. I accidentally clicked on interpreter to start Jupyter server. And so for that, I also selected um, this one with base conda. I don't actually know whether it matters. The directions only say that you need to select, do Python select interpreter, but I ended up setting both of them and it worked. So if I go back to my um, installation, if I go up to open and then navigate my way to a Jupyter notebook that I have on my computer, here's one right here. So it should be starting up a Jupyter server. Okay, so it's opened up the Jupyter server. Basically, it's running the same kind of um, web server that you see in a browser when you run Jupyter Notebooks locally, but this time it's, it's running it through the VS Code interface rather than through the browser interface. And so because it's a different interface, you can see the layout is a little bit different, but um, this is actually the same Jupyter Notebook as in some of the uh, lesson demos. And so you can see here are the cells um, and here's the markdown uh, text in this cell right here. So if I want to actually run a cell, um, it's a little bit like the CoLab interface where you don't go up to a run button at the top of the screen, but rather you just click on this little play button right here. And so it ran that cell and it ran that cell. If you want to clear the cell output, there's a thing for that up here, clear all output. If I click on that, it clears the output. I can also add a cell by doing this and um, decide whether I want it to be markdown or not, or whether I want it to be code. So the M and the downward pointing arrow makes it be a markdown cell. The little um, curly bracket means that it's a code set, or you're changing it to a code cell. Um, so this is change to a markdown cell or change to a code cell. Other than that, it basically works like a regular Jupyter Notebook. Um, and of course you have to save 
the notebook uh, just as you do in the web interface.